Hi guys and welcome to Better Data Science. In the last couple of videos in the Airflow series you've seen how to write basic data pipelines. You also might have seen the two warning messages on the Airflow homepage. Basically in complaints about us using SQLite for the backend metadata database for Airflow and about using sequential executor. Both are bottlenecks you want to avoid in production. For example, if you have a DAG that needs to run a couple of tests at the same time, well, you can do it with the default configuration. SQLite database doesn't support parallelism, and sequential executor runs tasks one after the other, just as the name suggests. Today we'll fix this behavior by migrating the Airflow Metastore database to Postgres and enabling parallel execution on a single machine with local executor. If you plan to distribute your workload among different nodes, then you should try the Celery Executor, but that's the topic for another time. So without much ado, let's get started. Here I am at the Airflow Web Server homepage. You can see the two warning messages mentioned earlier. These shouldn't be here, so let's fix them. To start, open the Airflow config file that's located in your root Airflow directory. In there, start at the line 24. In here you'll see the values for the executor and below you'll see the value for the SQL Alchemy connection. You'll need to change the executor to local executor and the SQL Alchemy connection string to match the connection to the Postgres database. So first for the executor, just change it to local executor. And it goes without saying but you'll need the Postgres database installed and you'll need to create a new database for Airflow. I've named my database metadb underscore airflow so I can establish a connection with the following connection string. So let me just delete this. It's Postgres SQL plus psycho pg2. Now your database user. It's user airflow for me. Now database password. At it should probably be localhost if the Postgres database is running on your local machine. And finally, the database name. Mine is MetaDB Airflow. Okay, we are now done with that, which means we'll need to initialize the database and create the admin user next. Okay, let me minimize PyCharm and open a new terminal window. I already have the Airflow virtual environment activated, so do that. The first step now is to terminate the Airflow web server and the scheduler if you have them running. There's no optimal way to do so if they're running in the daemon mode. However, we know the Airflow web server is running on port 8080 and the scheduler is running on the port 8793. This means that we can use the LSOF command to list the process running on a specific port and then kill them. So LSOF ITCP 80, 80 for the web server. Okay, now just copy this process ID and kill that process ID. And now the same for the scheduler LSOF ITCP 8793. And it appears that the scheduler isn't running. So let me clear this. And from here we can initialize the database. So airflow db init. The initialization process is complete after a couple of seconds, which means we can create the admin user next. Let me clear the console. So airflow users create. So for the username, I'll use admin. For the password, I'll use admin. What's next? Role, that's also admin, but with a capital A. First name, I'll put mine. Last name also. And email, I'll put my business email. Dot com. Okay, let's run it. And you can see the success message in the terminal. We have successfully migrated the database and created the admin user. The only thing left to do is to restart the Airflow web server and the scheduler. So let's do that next. 
let's now run both the web server and the scheduler in the daemon mode. So airflow web server select D. Okay, the web server is running on port 8080. And now airflow scheduler D. Okay, the scheduler is also running. Let me now open airflow and refresh the window. The metadata database migration and the change of Airflow Executor were successful, which means you're now ready to run tasks in parallel on a single machine. Before finishing the video, let's see what Airflow actually stores in the metadata database. So I'm here in Table Plus, you can see that I have the Postgres database connection established to metadata underscore Airflow, and you can see the tables listed in the left menu. It's a lot of tables essentially and these are responsible to keep Airflow up and running. That's all I wanted to cover today, so let's wrap things up next. We haven't written any code today, but that's the point. You already know how to write a basic data pipeline with Airflow and the number one issue you're facing is the speed. For example, there's no point in scraping five individual pages one after the other. You can scrape them in parallel and save yourself some time. And to be perfectly clear, only now you can parallelize the process as we took care of the maintenance and configuration tasks. In the following video, we'll write the tag that leverages the parallelism, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. That's all for today. I'll see you next time.